guys, so recently I did a video on my channel called my top 10 favourite fantasy books of all time where I naturally shared with you my favourite fantasy books and series and I thought I would do a sort of follow on from that and talk about my favourite science fiction and dystopian novels. Now I think these two genres very much overlap, I've always kind of considered dystopian or apocalyptic novels sort of a sub-genre of science fiction, I don't know where you stand on that but I'm bunging them all together in this one video. So there's a variety of different types of science fiction here, like I said there's dystopian, there's um, set on earth, there's set in space, there's futuristic, there's contemporary and yeah a diverse array, some that are more literary fiction, some that are quite comical and even a little bit of YA. So hopefully there's a kind of science fiction or dystopian book for everybody in this video. I love all of these books although many of them are quite different and without further ado let's chat about the books shall we? So these are in no particular order but the first book I'm going to mention is Stone Gods by Jeanette Winterson. So this definitely falls more on the literary fiction spectrum. Jeanette Winterson is probably best known for her sort of magical realism writing. Um, however, this one is very much sci-fi in that it is set predominantly in outer space. It's a book in three parts that are set over different times in the Earth's future, including following humans occupying new planets. And it is very typical of Jeanette Winderson. It's quite surreal. It's very beautifully written. It's not necessarily a plot driven novel, especially since it's separated into these three parts which um, kind of follow different characters and different relationships and it's kind of these three sort of romance tales set in different science fiction futures uh, following kind of this romance theme throughout the throughout time. It's, it's hard to explain but it's incredibly beautiful. It's also queer in that some of the relationships in this book are um, LGBT relationships and it kind of explores humanity's future. It kind of explores um, timeless themes and timeless feelings in, in humans but kind of also speculates on sort of like where our desires and um, the things that we're currently doing might lead us. It's again, like I said, just really beautiful, very thought provoking, really engaging book that you kind of fall into this kind of almost magical world. I know it's science fiction but I think it feels magical to read and I'm a big fan of Jeanette Winderson's writing. It's actually been a few years since I read this book. It was the first Jeanette Winderson book I ever read and once I'd read this I was a, I was a goner. I just continued to consume her books and absolutely adored them. I've read five now I think um, and there's many more waiting for me which is very exciting but this is definitely a book I actually think I'd like to go back and reread and putting together this list for this video has reminded me that this is a book I would like to reread so I think I'm going to try and do that in the near future but I would also highly recommend checking it out. I then have one that I doubt many of you haven't heard of but it is one of my favourites so I'm going to put it in here and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood is another one of my favourite authors, I've read quite a few of her books and adored most of them. There um, is like an outlier but generally I adore her novels and The Handmaid's Tale really deserves I think the um, praise that it has received. It is quite a difficult and sometimes harrowing dystopian novel set in a future in which fertility has massively decreased because of sort of different chemicals and things in the atmosphere and uh, but, but fertility is massively down and society has been restructured so that the few women that are still fertile are handmaids and they basically are lent out to wealthy couples in order for the men to impregnate them so they can have children. However, it's like historically infertility is always blamed on the women but we know that that's not true, that, that either men or women can be infertile but again in this world there's really no um, expectation on the men to prove their fertility. It becomes the burden of the women and it becomes this extreme patriarchy in which women are incredibly oppressed and um, like I said serve as these handmaids, at least some of them do. There are other sections of society that the women that aren't fertile are kind of sent off to um, and it follows our protagonist Offred who is a handmaid and what I think is so interesting about Offred is that she isn't this chosen one character with a hero complex, she isn't really out to change everything. She's just trying to get by and kind of process 
this world that she now lives in because when she was first born, um, although the world was already changing, it wasn't as extreme as it is now and she originally had a partner and a child of her own. Um, so it's very much following her emotional journey as well as her learning more about um, how the society outside of her handmade circle works um, and learning more about that and just kind of trying to survive. And again, like I said, very harrowing, very emotional and beautifully written. I'm then going to go for quite a recent read for me and that is the Binti Trilogy by Nnedi Okorafor. So this is a trilogy of science fiction novellas. So the first one's under 100 pages but the second two are closer to 200 pages. So a little bit more meaty, um, which is good because I think once you've read the first one you just fall in love with the story and want more and more. And these books follow Binti, who is a young woman from Earth, although set in a far future Earth, um, of a specific uh, group of people. And of her people, she's the first ever to leave planet Earth and travel to attend Umza University, which she has been accepted to, which is incredibly impressive. Umza University takes students from across the universe of different alien races, and it's like a great honor. And it's about her relationship both with her culture, her home, her, her traditions, and her future, and herself, and what makes her unique. And this, this really builds up as the story unfolds. And um, we get more layers to this identity, and we see her really become an incredibly complex individual and realize how complex really her history and her future is. Um, but it's also an incredibly dramatic, fast-paced, plot-fueled book, and it manages to be both of these things, quite introspective and creative, as well as really, like, fast-paced adventure set in space and because a lot happens in the first book which is also very short I don't want to say much more about the plot but just know that things start very quickly and just keep going and it is so much fun to follow. I loved Binti, I loved the other characters, I felt so attached to them, I felt really emotional reading these books, really engaged and absolutely adored them. I'm going to mention another trilogy next which I'm sure you've heard of but it is one of my favourites and that is the Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins. Uh, the Hunger Games was a series that has been incredibly highly praised and hyped over the years. It's obviously had a successful film trilogy made out of it. And I initially had no plans on reading it because I sort of assumed it was going to be overhyped and I wasn't going to enjoy it as much as the hype suggested. However, a friend of mine, Nicola, who also makes YouTube videos, uh, loved this series. And, you know, I really trusted her. She does not love books lightly. Her taste is excellent, so I thought I'd give them a shot. And I'm so pleased I did because I completely fell in love with them. This is one of my favourite young adult series of all time. It's a reread for me. It's like a series I can go back to and just fall into the world and, like, the rest of the world around me shuts off. Although it can be incredibly dark in moment. And one of the nice things about this uh, science fiction dystopian series is that it doesn't shy away from the darker side of emotions. It deals with sort of PTSD themes as well, which I think is really amazing. It follows Katniss Everdeen, a young woman from a District 12, who lives in this world in which all of the districts have to um, kind of sacrifice two of their young people every year to the Hunger Games, a boy and a girl, between the ages of 12 and 18, I believe. Um, because a long, long time ago the districts rose up in a rebellion against the capital and this is a way to sort of keep them suppressed um, and keep them downtrodden. So this this game is then televised to uh, the whole of Panem and in it all of these children from the different districts have to compete against one another and only one can come out alive. Um, so yeah, everybody watches this televised spectacle where all of these young people are dying and obviously, as you can guess at the beginning of the story, Katniss becomes one of those tributes and it's honestly amazing. I think if this is a book you've been a little bit hesitant to check out because of the hype, I would seriously suggest giving it a shot. Next up is probably my all-time favourite book on this list because it is one of my all-time favourite books of all time and you'll know that if you've seen my top 10 favourite books of all time. And that is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Galaxy by Douglas Adams. This is a comical science fiction series um, set in outer space and it follows Arthur Dent who is a human man and it's set in contemporary England at the beginning or when the book was first written at least um, which was a while back now and Arthur Dent's best friend Ford Prefect turns out to be an alien hitchhiker who has been stranded on earth and he is able to catch a lift finally off of earth taking Arthur Dent with him when a Vogon constructor fleet, which is a massive um, 
like shit of aliens come to uh, blow up the earth in order to make space for a hyperspace bypass and it just it goes on from there it is so so funny and really clever and witty I adore, adore this series. It's also a radio show, a TV show, a film, and I adore each of its incarnations. I just think it's brilliant. One of my favorite books of all time, like I mentioned, I've reread it over and over and over again, and it makes me laugh every time. We then have Only Ever Years by Louise O'Neill. This is another young adult novel, and I think if you have read The Handmaid's Tale and read that book, then you will very much enjoy this, because it's another one that definitely plays on feminist themes. Louise O'Neill writes wonderful feminist young adult novels and has recently um, diversified into the adult genre as well. It's set in a futuristic world, again, in a strict sort of patriarchal society where fertility problems are another theme in that in this society female children are no longer born. So if only male children are born and female children are instead sort of grown in laboratories. And then these young women are raised in these intense environments without parents in these schools where they are raised to be the perfect women, which can be of three perfect types. One is sort of like a nun. These women are like the minority and will then sort of go on to teach the future generations of children. Then you have the ones that are destined to be wives and the ones that are destined to be mistresses. It deals heavily with issues like um, body dysmorphia, eating disorders, just our obsession with the way um, young women and women should look, how we um, sort of teach young women to be a certain way, especially for men, um, so that they can get a man. And it's such, such an intense novel. Like, I found myself feeling quite uneasy whilst reading it, but I found it incredibly powerful. A uh, wonderful, wonderful story and really thought-provoking. So again, highly recommend. My next recommendation I'd probably categorise as light sci-fi. I wasn't even quite sure if it counted as sci-fi but I looked up on Goodreads and it seems to be categorised as sci-fi and there are definitely sort of science fiction elements that develop as the book goes on and that is Galapagos by Kurt Vonnegut. So this is a sort of dark comedy novel. It is comedic but it plays on quite dark themes um, to create that comedy. It follows a cruise ship of people and after they've set off on their cruise the rest of the world basically starts to unravel, you know, like <laughs> and they end up stranded on the island of Galapagos and are seemingly the last of of their people, of, of humanity to survive so they kind of have to restart society on this island. It's really hard to explain but it's one that I'd highly recommend giving a shot. I've never read any other Kurt Vonnegut but I really should because I adored this novel. I thought it was very clever, very well written made me laugh um, but just also was like a really intriguing premise but it really really works and again like I said I really need to read some more Kurt Vonnegut so please do leave your recommendations down below. I then thought I'd mention a comic book series and now this is probably one of the most popular science fiction comic book series out there but I think it's popular for a reason and I too very much enjoy it and that is the Saga comic book series which you can buy in volumes and I've read the first five volumes of so I am a little bit behind on this one because there are more than that out and I need to catch up but in the meantime I thought I'd recommend it to those of you that perhaps check haven't checked it out yet because I think it really is worth checking out. This one is set in space. It's a sort of space opera story. There's so much going on. Um, these two different planets or moons are at war and it follows a couple of um, different races of aliens who are from the different warring factions. So they sort of have a Romeo and Juliet relationship where they are not supposed to be together. But um, in the first series, they sort of are running away because they are about to give birth to their first child, which is like blasphemy. Nobody high up wants people to know that their two races can sort of get on and even breed together so they're being sort of hunted down to be stopped so they're on on the run whilst trying to protect their newborn baby and it's super super intense and wonderful um really diverse cast of characters um really interesting plot that takes lots of twists and turns and there's loads to follow obviously it's comic book series so it's quite long um but it never gets boring there's always something new to get your teeth stuck into um, and i just think it's such great fun last two however are on a similar theme and you will figure out what that is when i mention the second one but first of all i'm going to mention a classic science fiction novel or apocalyptic novel and that is the day of the triffids by john Wyndham. 
So this book came out in the mid 20th century and John Wyndham is like a classic science fiction author. Like if you're into science fiction, you should definitely check out some John Wyndham if you haven't already. But Day of the Triffids is definitely my favorite. Now, Day of the Triffids is set um, sort of mid-apocalypse. Um, we find ourselves in London at the beginning of our novel when a patient in a hospital who has had an accident involving his eyes um, wakes up to take the bandages off of his eyes so he can finally see again but it turns out the rest of the city can't see. Everybody has gone blind and he doesn't know why they've gone blind. Amidst this there are also these plants called triffids and these triffids have been sort of breeding for quite a few years now, people have been studying them and they're dotted all over the country because they just became sort of like a fad. But triffids are also blind, however triffids are used to being blind so suddenly when all of the humans lose their eyesight the triffids have the upper hand. And it just is such a fun novel. Again, it takes so many twists and turns. This is one of those novels where you think it's going one way, it goes the other way, and that I really enjoy. That's really fun to read. Um, really just sort of clever, and also just written in John Wyndham's very twee, quintessential British way. Like, it feels very English to me as a reader, like almost sitcom -y politeness um, despite being in the midst of an apocalypse and I think that's a lot of fun to read. I really like that writing style. So I think this is one that is definitely worth checking out and it can be very dark and dramatic as well. But my next novel I mentioned is on a similar theme and that's because it is actually a retelling of a John Wyndham story or a new novel inspired by a John Wyndham story. And that is The Fallen Children by David Owen. Now this is inspired by The Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham which is another science fiction novel that I very much enjoy and would recommend. However, I do not think you need to have read The Midwitch Cuckoos to read The Fallen Children and I actually love The Fallen Children more. Um, obviously, it relies on the premise of the Midwitch Cuckoos, so like, it maybe would never have come to be if it wasn't for John Wyndham, so we owe him that, but honestly, I think this novel um, really, you know, takes the story to a new level, it makes it relevant to a new audience, and is such, such a wonderful story. It is a young adult novel set in London on a council estate, and it follows a group of young women who one night when something strange happens in, in their council block and everyone else seems to like, and everyone seems to have passed out, they wake up and find themselves pregnant. So there's four young women who wake up to find themselves pregnant, three of whom are still of school age. And through various clues, they kind of realize that they have been impregnated by an alien species. And that's sort of the premise from The Midwitch Cuckoos, but this book kind of takes that premise and does so many wonderful things with it. It explores the perspective of these young women and how they feel about having been impregnated by an alien race. It deals with like themes of sexual violation and unwanted pregnancies. It deals with poverty and young people being let down by the state. It is such a heartbreaking yet kind of inspiring novel, um, like these characters are wonderful characters to follow, they all have very different reactions to the situations they find themselves in and deal with it very differently and they all feel so real and tangible um, and I really enjoyed following their story and thought um, it was an incredibly thought provoking novel that took this wonderful science fiction premise that was really intriguing to follow and made some amazing commentary on contemporary Britain and life for young people in Britain. But those are my top 10 science fiction and dystopian novels. I would love, love, love to know what your favourite science fiction or dystopian novels are, especially if you think I would like them based on what I've mentioned I like in this video, because it's definitely a genre I would like to read more of. It's one that I've read less of than fantasy, but have some favourite scents, so I would definitely like to expand my knowledge on. So do leave your recommendations down below. I'd also love to chat to you about these 10 books because as you can tell, I love them and would love to chat about them. Even if you don't like them, I'd love to know why you didn't like them. So do leave those comments down below, but until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.